Welcome back, everybody, to another Rector's Roost. I'm in a different place right now, same office, but I'm actually behind my desk now. So if you can see my desk, it's, it's quite a mess, uh, which means there's a lot going on. Um, but you have the typical face mask, hand cleaner, <laughs> uh, and things of that uh, that you might have on at your home desk or in your table. There is five things I would like to talk to you about today. And the first thing is probably the most important thing, and that is the progress of our sanctuary renovation uh, campaign. We are just about really finished with the design part of this campaign. There's just a few little things here and there that need to be tweaked. But overall, the design part is, is finished. And now we enter into another very important part of this campaign and that is the disbursement of this information and how you can be part of making this project a reality so over the next three months this spring we're going to be having a series of receptions so it's going to be unfolded in a very sequential and strategic manner and so many of you most of you will be receiving a personal invitation to come to one of these receptions, whether in person or, or on Zoom. And when you get that, please respond to it, to what reception you would like to be a part of. And at those receptions, you will hear and you will see the details of this project. And you'll be able to have a period of questions and answers to, to this project and and how you can be of course involved with making this a reality so it's a pivotal part in this process of this campaign we've been doing this now starting this for the last 15 uh, months and so this is very a crucial part of of our project so um so the sanctuary renovation page on our website will follow up well in the next few weeks with information about the questions that have been asked already at these receptions that are coming up here soon. So a lot of information coming, uh, and I know I've actually been saying that, but now it's, it's, it's real, and the invitations and to some of these receptions have already been sent out, and everybody will have an opportunity to see the details of this. So just be patient. So again, the next three months. So some of you might be on that last month so just please be patient with us because there's uh, a lot of people here in the parish uh, and our hall can only accept so many people and our zoom sessions can only have so many as well so that's an exciting part of of, of this campaign so please uh, pray for it uh, it's beautiful it's exciting and uh, I know you will hopefully experience it that way as well all right, so the second thing uh, is the thing that is a prayer, the Stations of the Cross. It happens tonight. It's Friday. Every Friday evening at 6 p.m., we have the Stations, and the Stations of the Cross are a very traditional way of praying through Lent, either, uh, whether you're an individual, a couple, or a family. Uh, the Stations are a beautiful way of praying through Lent, so please join us. Deacon Andy is going to be praying with us or leading this uh, stations tonight. And thirdly, uh, please join uh, Dr. Sonia Cronin for her th second presentation of a three-part series on voices crying in the wilderness. And you can imagine what those voices are. Those are the prophets, the prophets of Lent. And so this Monday, every Monday, for the next two Mondays at least, at 7 to 8 p.m., um, via Zoom, and I know many of you have probably Zoomed out. Uh, so many people are having Zoom meetings with their work or however you do that. But uh, this is an exciting time. She's a great presenter, uh, professor at Florida State University, and she gives a great presentation. So, uh, Voices Crying in the Desert, and I, th I believe this presentation is going to be on Elijah or Alicia. Um, uh, so great prophets uh, of, of Lent. So join her for that. Fourthly, uh, our Lenten penance service. Uh, this is another uh, experience of Lent. We have one in Advent and we always have one during Lent. And that's coming up on March 25th. It's a Thursday evening, March 25th at 7 p.m. And we're going to have five priests available to hear your confessions. Of course, go to one. <laughs> Uh, 
and it's a, a wonderful experience for so many during a Lenten time. If you have not experienced that sacrament in a long time, I would ask you please consider that for your Lenten uh, journey. And there's no regrets. No one's ever regretted going to confession. So please consider that um, coming up. And finally, let's uh, keep Pope Francis in our prayers. Pope Francis is now in Iraq. He landed this morning in Iraq. And it's a journey, it's a mission of, of peace. You know, most all of his apostolic visits, and this is his first apostolic visit in 15 months. You know, once COVID shut things down, particularly in Europe, he, like so many, you know, sequestered themselves to Italy, to their homes. And, and now he's out and he's traveling to Iraq. This has been a long planned meeting for him. And there's a lot happening, as you know, in Iraq right now. And he didn't want to put it off. And so he went. And so he's there now through Monday. And he's uh, going to pivotal places uh, in Iraq. He's going to go to Ur. And we know Ur to be that place where Abraham was called by God to go to Canaan. So it's a famous place, the, the Valley of Ur. And he's going to Mosul. And we hear Mosul a lot in the news. And Mosul is um, the place of Nineveh, the Assyrian capital of Nineveh. You remember that with the prophet Jonah preaching through Nineveh. Nineveh was once the largest city in the world. So its uh, ancient ruins are still there. So he's going there and and Korokosh, which is just next to that as well, within the province of Nineveh. So, historic areas. And he's asking the Christians to stay and to help rebuild uh, their country of Iraq. And so he's there also to be a support to the Christians. And of course, the Christians are very much of a minority there, but they have a long-standing history. Um, it's the cradle of Christian civilization is, is in Iraq. As well, it's also the place of the biblical Garden of Eden, um, with the two great rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. Um, so, very much of a historical place that Pope Francis has been longing to be to go to. So, let's pray for him. So, those are the things um, that uh, I hope that you can consider and and pray for during this week. And uh, we'll see you next week. God bless. Take care.